Hi, Teacher Bruce here, and I'm here to talk about uh, ribbons and ribbon sticks today, which can really range in gamut as far as uh, difficulty you make and how simple it needs to be. The main idea is that we're using something that we're moving that response to us as we are moving the music. And at the most basic form, I could take a paper towel here and instantly, by holding on to it, use it as a ribbon. And it works really well. And if I want to take this and turn it into a ribbon stick, all I'm going to do is take this and some duct tape, or tape for that matter, doesn't matter, and then tape it onto here like so, and I'll have a ribbon stick. And that works really well. And this, again, it doesn't have to be duct tape to what I had this morning. And I'm gonna take this, tape it around the end so it's secured nicely. And then voila, ribbon stick. All right, now let's say I have some parents are really happy just doing this or just doing the ribbon itself, not even the ribbon stick. I have also parents that really want to work with ribbons. Well, down at the dollar store here, you get ribbons and you can use ribbons handheld or you can even incorporate by going to like a Hobby Lobby or something and get ribbons with bells. So my kids who are stimulated by auditory or visually impaired, they can use ribbons, but at the same time, get the idea of the movement by the sound, All right? So I have this, just ribbon, and then tied into an overhand loop or knot, and then doing my ribbon activity. I can also, though, take and make this, and this is really simple to make. All I'm gonna do is get a dowel like this, And then I'm gonna put in a swivel, a little fishing swivel, that's all this is, and then wood screw it in. And you can use the drill with a Phillips uh, attachment, or you could use, use a hand, hand uh, screwdriver. It doesn't matter. The main idea here is that we have that ribbon that's gonna move, and whether we're holding it onto a stick or holding it in our hand, we have ribbons, varying levels that are easy to make, and something that you can find in the home, and if not, buy for very little. Until next time, have a great day. I'll talk to you later, bye. Teacher Bruce here, and today we're going to talk about hitting suspended balls and what we could use as paddles. Obviously, we could get a plastic paddle and spend a few dollars, uh, and you even find them, you know, like at the dollar store sometimes. And I like going to the dollar store because I can buy things in quantity and uh, tend to be inexpensive, and they can suit my purposes just fine. But we can use things that we find around the house. First of all, let's talk about a suspended ball. Sure, I could get a wiffle ball here, attach a string to it, and suspend it. But I also could do the same thing with a sock ball. Attach a string to it, and then suspend it. What do you suspend it from? It can be even your hand held above the child's um, hand or racket, as we should say. Um, another very simple form of racket, and I loved, uh, I was at a national deputy conference years ago, and this person had one of those number one fingers in the hands, you know, that you see at the football games and basketball games. And he slid that onto his hand. And he said, here we have a paddle. A paddle's just an extension for our hand. So something that most kids or a lot of kids have around the house is a lunch pail. We put a lunch pail in the hand and we can hit the sock ball. We can hit the ball again. Let's take it a step further. Say we want a, sh a shaft. So 
let's make our own paddle. All I have here is a couple of paper plates that I've cut a hole or a little slut in. I have a paper roll holder. I'm sorry, paper towel roll. And then I take several pieces of duct tape. and tape it around the edge. this paper towel holder roll secured inside and again and I again doesn't have to be duct tape like I said in one of my earlier videos it just happened to be what I have at my disposal. The nice thing about this also is if you're using a white paper plate or where it's white on the backside, which most paper plates I believe are, you make an art project with your uh, the child, they can really personalize their uh, paper plate or racket, do their own face or something on it. But here you go. And it is ready to serve up some sock balls or suspended balls as you have it. This is very primitive, but very effective and gets the job done. Until next time, have a great day. See you. Bye. Teacher Bruce here, and I want to talk about something that you definitely have, or most everybody has around the house, that you could use as a backpack. Uh, I'm sorry, use as a medicine ball, and that's a backpack. And the neat thing about, about backpacks is you can put all sorts of things inside of them to make it heavier. You know, students carry backpacks with books all day long. A lot of times there's too many books in that backpack. My point is, if you have books, you have paper, you have whatever you have, you can add it to your backpack and then use it as a medicine ball. You can use it for medicine ball squats, medicine ball chops, medicine ball twists, everything except slams. Anyways, here's a great item, a backpack that you can use once you put some stuff in it to make it heavy as a medicine ball. Until next time, have a great day. Bye. Hi, uh, Teacher Bruce here. Yes, yeah, so I'm Teacher Mario too sometimes. I want to take a minute today to show you how you can, and you can teach your parents how to make a medicine ball. For years, I've been making medicine balls with my students at school, which they could take home. And the medicine balls I would usually use would involve um, plastic bags, Ziploc bag, sand, although you can substitute cat litter for it and uh, duct tape and a playground ball that was a leaky playground ball or a ball that basically had, couldn't hold air. I discovered recently that I don't need the playground ball, that I can actually make a medicine ball with just, again, plastic bags, Ziploc bag, sand, or cat litter, and then duct tape. Now, the duct tape I have here is colored. You don't need anything fancy. It could just be plain black duct tape. And I'd even venture to say that you could probably make the medicine ball without the tape. The only thing is it wouldn't really have as much of a shape. But it could be feasible to do just plastic bags. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some plastic bags here. And I'm going to stuff the plastic bags in 
here to where it's about halfway full. I'm gonna try to do this fairly quickly just to show you how easy it is to make. I'm gonna take now my Ziploc bag, open it up, and put it in to the bag, and I'm gonna pour sand into it. When I would do this with my students, I would use, use a funnel. I'm gonna take a chance on me doing this without making too much of a mess today, hopefully. And so I'm pouring in to where I get it to the weight that I desire. And again, once you have that Ziploc bag, okay, yeah, this feels like about four to five pounds. And I usually would weigh them with my students. But again, the best judge for whether that medicine ball is the correct weight or not would be the child lift you. So now I'm gonna zip, put in more grocery bags and continue packing it in and wrapping it around itself. Until I get the ball to the desired size that I want it. And every time I put it in, I do a simple overhand knot to tighten it down. I'm trying to compress the air out of the bag as much as possible as I go. So it's more dense and solid. Also trying to form it into more of a, a ball shape. I will tell you, it's not gonna be perfect. They never are. But the bottom line is to do medicine ball activities with this will be very functional. I would go on to say, you don't have to make a medicine ball to do medicine ball activities. There's all sorts of other things we can use. But for our kids, who are used to using medicine balls at school, and I use them all the time with my uh, middle school kids especially, and so my elementary, depending upon their needs. Keep on going. Now I've got the ball, and now I'm ready to tape. These gloves are not gonna work. I will say that it takes a fair amount of tape to make the medicine ball. And I'm gonna just tape one side. And then another. Until I get it covered. Again, I'm trying to mold the ball back to as much of a ball shape as possible.
as I'm taping, taping it. Nice thing about the colored tape, and again, depending upon budget, is that the kids could do all sorts of different designs. In my classes, I've had kids make uh, uh, Pokemon medicine balls and soccer medicine balls. It just sort of whatever. It spurs their interest. I will say when I do this at home with, and I'm making a video, my boys always want to make their own. And I think it's something to be said for making your own equipment. Greater ownership. So basically you're aiming to cover the entire bag with duct tape. There's some pushing down on it, trying to get a little bit more of a ball shape. But again, that doesn't have to be perfect round. There you go. Pretty good medicine ball. Um, I will say that the medicine balls that I've made in the past with the playground balls, if we're doing slams, they would have a tendency to uh, crack open after a period of time. I have not done a lot of slams with these yet. I just, out of caution, um, I could use this as an experiment to see if it will withstand uh, slams. But I usually use it, use it for chops, twists, on a lot of other exercises, but I avoid the uh, slams. Anyways, that's it. How to make a homemade medicine ball out of plastic bags, Ziploc bag, cap litter. Don't use the use clap, it won't work. And sand, duct tape. That's it. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. remote control. Sometimes these things just don't work well. Teacher Bruce here and I'm here to talk about balance and working on uh, balance beam goals without a balance beam. Now, we all know uh, as professionals that we can use a 2x4 or a 2x6 for a kid who's a little bit more challenged or even a narrow balance beam for higher skilled kids. I had an idea the other day, what if we don't have two by fours? A lot of parents don't have access to two by fours, but something you find in almost every house is a blanket or a large towel. And what you can do is you can take, beach towels work great. Um, you can take a blanket here, and I have mine folded up like this, and now I can fold it again. 
and I can make it to any width I'd like. Be mindful though, as I get narrower, my balance beam gets thicker, which makes it a little bit more harder to maintain balance on. But this is a simple way of working on balance and using a balance beam without a balance beam. It's something that we find commonly in homes. Hope this helps. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hi parents, um, I have a balloon in one hand and you see a plastic bag here in my other hand, just a simple plastic bag. Um, the reason why I brought this balloon out is I wanted to share with you and this plastic bag uh, idea that I came up with the other day. I was just thinking about things because we used to have uh, cloth bags, pardon me, cloth bags that we would put balloons in which would make the balloon a little bit more durable. It also would speed up the flight of the balloon, but yet at the same time not make it so fast that it's at the speed of a ball flying through the air. But you know, as we catch balloons, one thing is we know that balloons are not easy to grab. Sometimes uh, they might even pop depending upon how they're grabbed, but they're, they're, they're not really super easy. They're great for volleying. That, that works really well. But if I take this balloon and I put it in this grocery bag and I just tie it simple overhand knot. I don't even have to do it two times. Just once is sufficient. But now I have a balloon that's in a bag, but this bag protects the balloon. So it makes the balloon a little bit more durable and then also adds weight. So the balloon travels a little bit faster. And so that way, when we're working on catching skills, I have to react a little bit quicker. The other thing is the bag gives or creates a little bit of a give in the balloon, which makes it easier to catch. So we're working on those catching skills. We're, we're going to get our hands up. Now I can work on catching. And again, the, the balloon is non-threatening to a lot of kids, except for those kids who have issues with it popping. But again, the plastic bag creates a little bit more durability and it's inexpensive. Bags, I think they charge 10 cents at the store and then a balloon. And then you have a balloon in a bag, which suffices really well for a ball. Anyways, have a great day. Look forward to talking to you soon. Bye. We're gonna make a balloon duct tape ball. It's super fun and easy. You need a balloon and duct tape. You can use any color. I've even used the cheap brands. So uh, whatever works best for you. And uh, let me show you how easy it is to do this. First, you're gonna blow up your balloon, tie it off, and then you're gonna apply the duct tape. As you apply the duct tape, the very first strip that I do, I just try to make sure that I try to make the, the ball as round as possible. So I grab that one end since it's kind of a, you know, oblong shape and I press it down. You have to be very careful that as soon as you press the tape down, you don't lift it back up and let it be. And um, then it won't pop. So now we're going to speed up the process. I'm just going to keep applying more tape over the whole balloon. Alrighty, so then I just need to be finishing it up. Make sure that I cover all the spaces. And then you're going to take time to make sure that you kind of press all the seams um, so that it stays nice and sealed. I've actually had these balls last months and months when they're stored inside. Like when I say months, 
I've had some last almost a year. And then um, if they're ones that go in and out of my car when I'm itinerant, they don't last as long, but during the winter they do a little bit better. And then um, if you catch it when it pops right away, then you kind of have like this shell that you can quickly blow up another balloon inside. So it's really, um, it's one of my favorite pieces of equipment. And um, the other thing is that um, it is a little bit heavier than a beach ball, flies better than a beach ball. I have put beans um, inside or rice inside, so it makes a little bit of noise. We tried to do a bell and um, it uh, popped the balloon uh, when it was bouncing. So um, if you have a bell maybe that might be protected, like um, a cat toy that it's kind of inside that, that um, uh, plastic ball, it might help. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. Um, so let me know if it works. And um, anyways, it works fantastic. I don't quite have this one done, but I don't want to take any more time. You can decorate it, um, putting other colors on it. And um, again, you just want to make sure you go through all the seams and press it down nice and tight. And it's going to last you a long time. And you've got yourself a super cool ball. Hey, it's Teacher Bruce here, and um, we're going to take a whole bunch of plastic bags, Brian, right now, today, and I'm going to make a ball out of them, and I'm going to show you how, and I'm going to break the video up in segments, but basically, I'm taking one bag after another, and I'm going to stuff it into a bag, and continue to wrap it around itself like this over and over and we're starting here and we'll continue in a second so right now I have a smaller ball which would be appropriate for uh, catching but we could also make this into a larger ball for kicking as well and we'll continue on when I have the ball to the size that I want it I'm going to go ahead and take and tape it um, usually I'd use duct tape, that'd be a more durable uh, product uh, or Gorilla tape, but you could use also packaging tape as well. So now I have the ball and it's about the size of a number three soccer ball, which is used for our younger kids, uh, U6, um, or kids under six. And uh, this ball uh, also is, oh, sorry, it's used for under eight as well. So this ball could be used for catching. Uh, it's soft and it's pliable. I'm going to put duct tape on it. I'll show you the finished product in just a second. All right. So here we are. Here's the, the ball with uh, duct tape now on it. Again, all this is is um, plastic bags that we're reusing. We're charged 10 cents each for at the grocery store. And I've taken them and turned them into a ball that we could catch, we could kick. And does it roll? Not perfectly, but it'll suffice. I wouldn't throw this ball around inside the house, especially near uh, things like TVs, but it's soft and it works. And not only that, the kids are have a good time making it. Uh, my boys just finished watching me and now all three of them want to make their own. That's it for today. Have a great day. Until next time, see you, bye. Hi everybody, it's Teacher Bruce here. And I'm here today to show you how to take a simple hand towel and turn it into a ball. So I, I've rolled up the hand towel. Well, let me start. Up. So I'm here and I'm going to just take the towel and I'm going to roll it up. So it's a nice long towel, almost like, you know, you'd snap at each other when you're in grade school or something. Hopefully not. And then take the towel. And I'm going to do a simple overhand knot. Tighten it equally on each side. I'm trying to tuck in the loose ends. Now I'm going to take it again after I've tightened it the first time and go again, tighten it down. Still have a little bit of loose ends, but a very functional ball in which we can overhand throw. We can toss and catch, and depending upon skills, we can also kick. If you want to make a larger towel, you can do the same thing, a larger pole, by getting a larger towel.
That's it. This is how to take a hand towel and turn it into a ball. Have a great day. Bye. So this one's easy. It's a bean bag and made with duct tape. So I'm gonna take my rice, love our chica rice, and a Ziploc, put it inside, fold it up in the shape of the bean bag that I want or the size that I want. <laughs> How easy is this? And I'll wrap her up with duct tape. And you have created yourself a very durable bean bag. You could do any of your beanbag activities. I will let you know that it could mark up gym floors um, sometimes with the duct tape, so you want to be aware of that. And uh, so it could be a great outside one or um, a carpeted area is fantastic. So with a little bit of love, I can give this guy perfect little space. Thanks. All right, another beanbag idea. Gotta love our chico rice. Rice or beans or sand into a Ziploc bag. Doesn't have to be the quart side. It's just that's what we've got here at the house. And I put it inside. You know those socks that never have their friends anymore? <laughs> they all go into a pile at my house and voila, tie it off. And your families have a bean bag. All right, this next one is a sponge ball. This is a big one, and I'm going to show you how to make a miniature one. And you can use some of those sponges that you buy at the store, and uh, you're just going to cut it up. The best way I've learned to cut foam, um, which is what I'm going to use today, is using that electric carving knife. And it just goes right through the foam fantastic. So anyways, I try to do about um, three quarter of an inch um, squares, and then you'll see what I do here. Cuts through great. I'm going to pause it while I cut the rest. All right. So you can see that I've cut through um, these layers this way. And I'm going to do one more cut this other way. It'd be awesome if I had four, but it's not perfectly, not perfectly rectangle. So, okay, I've got my logs. And now I'm going to take a zip tie, put it around there, put it right around the middle, squish it in there. This is the best part because that's what makes it a ball. And wrestle with it a minute. Zip tie it together as tight as I can get it. And check it out. I got myself a foam ball. So again, if you use the sponges that you can buy, cheap sponges, you can get them wet so that they're soft and um, then stack them together, like maybe like four, and then slice them down and then pull the zip tie in the middle of them and you've got yourself a sponge ball. Quick note that the reason why I love these balls is because they don't roll away. So if you're working with somebody who um, may not um, catch great, First, there's lots of things to catch, and it may land on a lap and stay, or it won't roll away when it hits the floor. So many great things, and uh, we've also done some painting projects with these two where we chuck them at the wall and make some paint fun. Enjoy.